Hello, my lovelies. Robbie at Kickback Garage. Now, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the uh, right in the corner there. The TV 175 restoration project is uh, in the corner there. Uh, you will see that there's no LD in here. I've sorted that out. But before I start on the uh, TV, I really need to do some um, winter maintenance on my two scooters. Now, uh, yeah, I think that's enough, isn't it? That's an intro. That's an intro and off. Hope you had a good uh, Christmas, Happy New Year, all that sort of stuff. Let's get cracking. Go grab yourself a cup of coffee. Right, so the plan of attack, I think. First, I'm going to have to grab my KTM, get it out the garage. Um, if you remember when I fit the SIP no speed exhaust, you might remember that I actually discovered one of the head bolts was loose on the TSN on the Series 1. Um, yeah, so uh, the only thing I'm going to do, because this is such a recent build, the only thing I'm going to do on the uh, Series 1 is actually take off the exhaust, inspect that. That's the only unknown entity I have on this scooter. And I am going to uh, take off the head cowl and uh, re-tighten the, um, or re the head nuts, the nut bolts, hood head, hood, blah, blah, blah. yeah, you know what I mean. So that's quite a quick job. So that's why I've got that on the bench first. And uh, my series two, I'm actually going to mess around with the gearing a little bit on that. And I want to, because that thing has done 18,000 kilometers, at least 18,000 kilometers, um, I need to, uh, I don't really need to, but I feel the need to uh, change the rings on that and give it a proper inspection. I might even change the, uh, the, the uh, main seals on that as well, because uh, next year we're going to Jervik, which is uh, 600 plus kilometer, to, uh, kilometer ride on the uh, National Rally. Right, let's uh, crack on. There you go. So the reason why I want to do, do these, get it out of the way, as you will, is because um, I know I'm going to be using quite a bit of time on the uh, TV. I can't close my garage door with it there. Maybe I should put this here. Probably a better idea, Rob. And that is what the uh, TV looks like. More on that later. If you've got a lift or you're planning on buying a lift, probably one of the best investments I've ever made. Then remember, when you jack it up, always use the safety bar at the front here so that it doesn't suddenly collapse on you because hydraulics, you never know, you never know. It's, uh, that's why it's called a safety bar. And actually, once I've uh, jacked it up, I've actually rested it down on that safety bar there. There you go, just so you know that it's uh, sturdy. So if you need to get to your uh, head cowl for some strange and wonderful reason, then um, <clears throat> this is how I do it. First off, remove the SLUK or the bridge, bridge piece screw, right on side only. I'll tell you something that's annoying, and that is all my screwdrivers are snapped, my flat bladed screwdrivers. So I've just got this skinny one here, and it's, uh, Oh, I'm glad this isn't original. I'm glad this isn't repainted. So I'll take off that one. Panel off. Oh, Jesus, what's happening? Panel's been off so long, my fingers are really cold. I can't pull the panel off, it's so stuck. 
it's stuck. There you go. <laughs> I had to really force that. And uh, that's another thing. If you jet these right, I haven't had this panel off since uh, the rebuild. Not a lot of uh, spit back on this. And this has done a few thousand kilometers. Next thing you have to do is remove the two uh, bolts on the strut. Don't have to take, do, remove anything else. It's really easy on a Series 2. A little more faff on a Series 3. But because of the, uh, the runners, they sort of join the rear runners and the front runners on the, on the leading edge. So remove these 7mm bolts here. Can do with a nice clean up. I can't feel my fingers, lad. Well, there should be just a case of easing it off. I have to compress the kickstart. Oh, I've got to take this one off as well, Rob. What a burk. Right, let's see if it'll go off now. Get off your buggy. Just have to ease it up there. Compress the kickstart. And it reveals my rusty exhaust. Am I allowed to say that um, I'm really disappointed with what a short while the clear coat on that uh, SIP no speed exhaust lasted. These things should come painted. Look at the state of that. It's only four months old and loads and loads of rust. I have not used this in the salt. I have used it in the rain. I, I, that, is, that is just not good. It, I think I might actually have to uh, paint it which uh, makes uh, this little winter maintenance uh, video a little bit longer. Springs. It springs to mind. Ah, 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 funny. This isn't, this wasn't the easiest exhaust to fit and not the easiest of exhausts to uh, take apart either. I'm just checking that the bushes that I made with the little step are in good order. That means that it's uh, sitting well and not vibrating. That's good. Off the end tailpipe. And it's not been blowing here because I've been using that sealant. You can see I even got, I might have to take off this uh, tailpipe as well and give this A paint as well, very annoying. I have to take uh, I have to take off the exhaust to be able to get to the head cowl. So and these. Uh, Exhaust springs. <laughs> Sometimes can be a pain in the ass uh, the exhaust springs, but these uh, BGM tools, these spring hook thingies, make the job a lot easier. Uh, got one there. So in theory, I should be able to uh, actually think I'm going to have to take, it's a two-piece system this, which is uh, good I suppose, but I think, uh, I think we're going to take it off as well, in one piece. There we go.
Look at the state of that. Four months. So yeah, sip. Stop delivering them with uh, clear coat. Well, it looks good when you first get it. This thing started rusting terribly just after four months. If I'm really lucky, I might be able to, uh, I might have enough room to get this out. I don't because uh, if I kept the engine at this position, it's going to hit the uh, my other side floorboard and they're a bit more difficult to remove. So off with the plug. There you go. Just took that up there out of the way. Where's my plug tool? It's a bit dark. It's not wet. And uh, plug chops, really ridiculous if you don't know what rev range you're, you was in when you, um, when you do the plug chop. Because uh, if I'm rich at tick over and uh, weak in the, in the mid range or something like that, and you let it stand at tick over, then uh, you're just going to get the tick over reading if you get my drift. So I don't really rely on uh, plug chops. Bit dark, bit oily, but it runs fine. So the plan of attack now is to uh, take off my BGM rear shock and uh, lower the motor down. Because what happens now is because the pivot point is behind the head cowl, it's when you take off the shock that should uh, lower the engine so they can get more access to the uh, head cowl itself. Let's lower it down. Right, let's see if I can get her off. Right, we're halfway there. So what I'm going to do now, I just want to inspect, make sure that it's not blowing anywhere. Uh, in particularly, looking around the head gasket, that looks clean, as clean as it did when I, uh, when I fit the exhaust. And the base gasket, and you can see it straight away, because if you've got a clean engine, that's why I like to have a clean engine, um, is that you can see it straight away if it's blowing anyway. And this looks uh, pretty good here. No sign of blowing by the exhaust manifold. The head gasket looks good. That's great. Have a look on the other side. Use my little BGM light here. Ah, it's all, it's all clean. All right, I've got my, uh, torque wrench. Let's see if it's still torqued properly. That is. Wasn't a lot. I took these up to 23 newton meter on a tuned engine. Oh, and that was loose. Oh, ho, ho. Isn't it odd that it doesn't, uh, isn't blowing? So that was a good job. I, uh, I checked these. Oh, hoy. That could have been a disaster. That's, uh, once that starts loosening, if that works its way around to the others, then uh, that's a disaster waiting to happen. I've had that happen once on a TS1 and uh, I hold my piston. And that's why I really do prefer the uh, eight bolt heads because they're not going anywhere. Right, I've refit the uh, head cowl, plug and plug cap and uh, temperature sensor. 
I'm just going to jack it up again and uh, fit the uh, rear shock. One thing I've done as well is I've gone over these, uh, just checking the screws, like on the rear mud guard, the tank, make sure all this is uh, still in place as it should be, trinians all uh, tight and nice. And one place in particular I always uh, try and check once I've got to sort of this condition is uh, the flywheel uh, cowling cover because uh, on the Casa case, which this isn't on my other scooter, uh, they use long allen bolts and they don't loosen. But on uh, the original type ones, they do have a ten tendency to um, vibrate loose. And I check those, everything, all the screws and everything are in place, so that's good. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, get the uh, shock on. I just saw there was a lot of, like, road debris on these. That's it. Just give it a bit of a brush before I lift up. Well, I can get to the top of the engine here before I lift it up. Still looks really clean, which is good. I'm uh, just going to put a little dab of uh, grease, new grease, on the mount. Just uh, those, uh, those can actually have a tendency to uh, seize a bit and you can't get them off or on. Fit my shock again. I'm absolutely in love with this shock. I uh, have to say, uh, me and BGM Scoot Center did a really good job on this and uh, the feedback that you fellas have uh, given me as well is very reassuring. It does iron out those uh, roads a little bit. On this one we've made it, turn, made it a little bit more sporty, set it up a little bit more sporty than uh, I have on my Series 2 because that's how my son prefers it. And that's the beauty of these shots, you can. And that's without having to wind that spring really really far down to try and get proper preload there you go that went on nicely wavy washers Some nice stainless steel nylock shock bolts. I like the ones that come from uh, MB, they're really nice. Uh, but these particular ones are actually from uh, Casa Lambretta. Right, I could absolutely go to town on this and use some scotch spray and get rid of all the rust. It's actually, for some strange reason, not quite as bad underneath as it is on the top. But this inside here is pretty shitty. But what I'm going to do is, because this, this, this would take forever if I didn't uh, get my skates on, is I'm just going to run over with a, with a wire brush just to, get, just to get the worst of it. If there's like any rusty flakes on there, then the paint won't sit on it. But I'm gonna just basically rough it up with a wire brush. Before I start spraying it, I like to uh, <coughs> wash it down. With this, it's a silicone remover. Now, it doesn't matter what sort of paint you're painting with, they really don't like silicones or grease. So give it a bit of a spray with this, just to remove anything I don't want on there. It just gives a little bit of chance of uh, your paint sticking. 
Once I've done that, I give it a rub down with a lint-free cloth. In real life, that means when your garage isn't like minus degrees, it dries itself. I'm gonna just dry that off. And what I do is, that goes for all the painting I do, is the small bits, I just hang on a little hook and take them outside and spray them, then hang them up on my garage roof. So then I can get all the, look at that, doesn't look too bad actually. After a proper clean. So once I've done this, I'll get these small bits, I'll hook them on a bit of wire and I'll paint them outside, give them a quick blast and hang them up in the garage, hopefully, because I really need to get this Series 1 off the bench so I can get the Series 2 on the bench, mine, before we start on the TV. Hopefully, it'll dry pretty quick so I can get that, get that sorted. Because this is such a big piece, I think, uh, and what I normally do as well, is actually I paint one side of it and then flip it over once it's uh, dry. Oh, almost dry for a couple of hours. Right, go grab myself a cup of coffee and uh, wait a couple of hours. Okay, so that's a couple of hours and it's uh, dry enough to flip. We'll get it a, give it another, another blast, another blast on the other side. They like us. I'm all loose. Are Yeah. Uh, icky then. Then why you're holding. Then why you're full of rust. This guy will hang into us on the... Uh... Yeah, no veldy. So I just left the uh, exhaust an hour before I painted the other side. And now it's got another hour. So obviously using longer time on this than I wanted to uh, use. But uh, it's all painted up. Uh, prefer, personally, prefer uh, black myself. But uh, grey or silver is what I had. So I fit it loosely. So it's just, uh, it's not, the bolts aren't tightened up yet. Uh, this is the stuff, this is the stuff I use to seal heads with. And uh, the 3 bond 12, 3 bond 12, 15. And it is really, really good stuff. I also use it on the exhaust. And that's why I haven't got any blowing, even though my uh, head was loose. So that's good. I still don't like it. I have to say, I really don't like the, uh, like the fact that they can loosen. And I checked the video I did when I fit this exhaust, when I found out, discovered that the uh, head was loose and it was actually, it was another bolt other than the one that I've already retightened. So I've talked them all up to 23 Newton. Hopefully they should last the season. Uh, looking at the plug, it's running a little bit rich somewhere in the rev range. So I'm hoping uh, my son will catch that if the head loosens again. But while I'm fitting this, I wanna talk a little bit about some new products that have come out on the market. I haven't got them, but I wanna hear, I'd like to see if you can write down in the comments what you think about the new Casa Performance 333 cylinder. Because in my mind, it's easy to justify this stuff. I am absolutely flat broke at the moment. The economy in Norway is absolutely terrible. 
The uh, inflation is a lot higher than the wages, and my wages were not good to start off with. And my mortgage now costs about 600 quid a month more than it did only for six months ago. So I've got very little money, but you can still dream, can't you? And I am actually dreaming about the sledgehammer. And the reason why I'm allowed to dream about that is because I'm thinking, I have a Casa side case, I've got a good clutch, I have got already got a good lay shaft, good rear hub. Yeah, do you know where I'm going with this? They are going to, in the summer, uh, Casa Performance are going to offer, I believe, a partially built kit like you can buy with the uh, SS. I have to wiggle it up there. There you go. Um, yeah, they're going to uh, offer a kit so that you can buy the case, the cylinder, um, and the exhaust. You have to modify your tank because the 333 is crank induced so that your your carb sits on the opposite side of the uh, silent blocks sits over here instead and then you need a cutout on the tank so i probably need a tank as well if i was going to go down that route but this is a long-term it's going to be a long-term project if it's ever realized because uh, because of the expense, but yep, yeah, that's a cheap way to do it, because cheap-ish way to do it. I've already got some fancy parts that I can put on there, but obviously I'd need a new exhaust, and yeah, so it's not just plain sailing, but I am doing my hardest to save every penny I can, so that maybe in the summer I could uh, start buying parts for that, and... Uh, maybe already by this time next year I could build and fit myself one of those I'm not tightening them down fully yet that seems pretty good actually that went together a lot better than it did the first time and that's because I was messing around with the bracketry and uh, had to modify a lot of stuff hmm very nice right that's uh, the series one Done and dusted. Let's get uh, get the series two on here. Right, so that is the uh, series two on the bench, and uh, obviously the next video will be concentrating on this one. I am going to uh, change the rings. I'm going to change the gearing. I'm going to talk a little bit about gearing. Uh, so, uh, because of that, I think it's going to be a lot easier if you just drop the engine out of the uh, scooter. And when I've done this, then we can concentrate on that uh, TV 175 Series 2. And why do I say TV 175? And I say that because a lot of people get annoyed by it. And that's my sort of humour. Um, I love you and leave you. And, yeah. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget, you can support the channel by becoming a member or uh, buying me a coffee, buying it some merch, stuff like that. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you all after the New Year's. ta -ra.